The Trinidad and Tobago government and trade unions at odds over the future of the state-owned oil company. And in sport, Trinbago Knight Riders jumped to the top of the CPL standings after beating Barbados Tridents in front of a home crowd. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean Intent for Monday, August 27th. I'll be back with the details after the break. So I have my tofu here that I already went ahead and cut up. I like to cut them in triangles. You can cut them in cubes as well. Big cubes, small cubes, however you want to cut it. So I'm going to give this a generous coating of this. So just once all the pieces are coated, that's good. And you want to make sure they fry evenly on both sides. I was a pH driver for several years. I hustled my car for a living. And the way I dealt with my passengers, I was observed by these gentlemen, and they were quite pleased and satisfied the service I provided to the passengers. And they recommended that I get into the tourism industry. So I got my taxi badge, I got a taxi, I joined the Tobago Owners and Drivers Association, which I am now the vice president of. The Trinidad and Tobago government is defending the decision to restructure the cash-strapped state-owned oil company Petrotrin, even as the powerful oil field workers' trade union, the OWTU, vowed to prevent the sale of the refinery. OWTU President Ansel Roger told a union organized prayer session outside the official residence of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley yesterday that fighting the move is for the benefit of all the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. But Energy Minister Franklin Kahn said Petrotrain's current state of affairs has the ability to bankrupt the country, describing the state oil company as, a moving, as moving towards a black hole. He told a news conference that past administrations, including the ruling People's National Movement, have kicked the can down the road with respect to the operations of Petrotrain, and he warned that it just could not continue as the company has serious systemic structural and operational issues which must be dealt with. Dominica's National Security Minister Rayburn Blackmore has called for more decisive action by stakeholders within the justice system to stem the rise in criminal activities in the country, and he announced moves by government to strengthen existing legislation. Speaking after a man was shot and killed during the early hours of Saturday, Blackmore said it's clear that guns are in the wrong hands. He said in 2011, the Roosevelt's character administration went to Parliament repealing the Firearms Act and enacting a new legislation imposing stringent penalties. But he said further amendments will now be pursued. Blackmore said the amendments are also intended to make provisions for custodial sentences so that once a person is found with an illegal firearm, they go straight to jail. He says people convicted of gun offenses should be dealt with seriously. Every citizen irrespective of political persuasion, must condemn this bold and vicious attack. To stem the situation, all players within the criminal justice system must act firmly and decisively. The police must intensify its effort to read the streets of illegal firearms and descend on the streets in the troublesome areas. The sentences laid down by the court, insofar as gun crimes are concerned, must suit the crime and reflect the sentiment of society. A mission from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, is scheduled to return to Barbados this week to continue negotiations on an agreement to provide assistance for the island to turn around the ailing economy that was disclosed by Prime Minister Mia Motley during an address over the weekend at the 7th, 7th Annual Delegation of Conference of the Barbados Workers' Union. She told delegates there that her administration is faced with a tall order as it embarks on working out how it will transform the government and the nation. She also charged that the country had been engaged in political cosmetology and her administration must confront the true cost of what government has become. Motley, who is also finance minister, said it would not be business as usual and government has moved to get out of the 100 million Barbados dollars uh, in contracts for the construction of 
a new desolation or new desolation plans that were signed by the former Democratic Labour Party government prior to the general election. Stay with us. Your Midday Sport is next. Welcome back. It's now time for sport. A well-played half-century from Brendan McCollum saw Trinbago Knight Riders beat Barbados Stridents by four wickets and jumped to the top of the table in the latest round of action of the Hero CPL at the Kensington Oval last night. Batting first, Tridents posted a mega total of 128 for eighth, which she hoped up scoring on 42, while Nicholas Puran chipped in with 34. Captain Dwayne Bravo and Carrie Pear picked up two wickets each. In reply, Knight Riders raced to victory with four overs to spare. McCollum smashed 66 from 42 deliveries in a 66-run partnership with Dinesh Ramdin. Let's look at some of the highlights of March 18 of the CPL. Again, Lakeside. He'll be out, should be out. The catch is taken by Wab Riaz, the big side of the ground, into the wind, everything almost against that shot from Ramdin. Ramdin falls so close to the wind, 20 to his name, it's 126 for fun. Dwayne Bravo comes to the crease. Chance, a chance for Smith to get one. Puts it in his pocket. So two wickets now in quick succession. Brandon and now McCollum. Excellent innings from McCollum. He goes for 66. It's 126 for six. Lovely shot to end the contest from the TKR captain who dances his way to victory here at Kensington Oval. And Jamaican footballer Malik Foster will ply his trade in Central America in the upcoming season after signing a one-year loan deal with Costa Rican club Liga de Porto, uh, that's Deportivo Aluense. Now, the 21-year-old Portmore United striker will suit up in the colors of the 29-time Costa Rican champion, uh, champions and two-time CONCACAF Champions League winners, effective September 1st. Foster's performances for his club had attracted the interest of several Costa Rican clubs, including Santos FC. However, Liga Deportivo was very aggressive in its interest, which resulted in the deal beginning or being closed last weekend. Now, on hearing the news, Foster said he was looking forward to playing for uh, such a successful club. He has been a key member of the senior Reggae Boys team since earning his first call-up earlier this year. That's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon.